Seven. What did he do? Seven. <laughs> yeah, knock, knock that off, Evander Kane. Did you put up six and go seven? <laughs> no, that's, uh, oh, okay. that's, that's me. That's me counting. That's seven, if you don't know. That's seven. Yeah. That's six. But yes. uh, welcome to Covers' as NHL Puck Prop for Saturday, May 14th with Jingles and Coco, where one of us is a former first-round NHL pick and the other one is me. I'm your co-host, Josh Jingles, betting analyst for Covers.com, joined always by 14-year NHL vet, NHL analyst, Carlo Koliakovo. Welcome to Game 7 Saturday. What is on the slate for Coco today? It's a bonanza, buddy. I just finished golfing, in case people are wondering why I'm wearing this funky <laughs> waggle golf gear, which I'm absolutely in love with. Um, but uh, yeah, it starts with Carolina, Boston, Toronto, Tampa, and it ends with Edmonton, LA. Doesn't get better than a sports Saturday like this. No, and then uh, followed up on the Sunday too. It's it's crazy the game yeah, seven that we're seeing here. Yeah, Rangers love and, it. Uh, Dallas, Calgary. Yeah, yeah. So one and two the other day. Bergeron somehow doesn't get a point in that win. That one Craziness. really hurt. Yeah, Kaprizov. I mean, Minnesota just kind of laid an egg. Yeah, let's go with Cam Talbot in a deciding game. I don't understand. Yeah. That. So they're in trouble with the cap going forward. But we went one and two. Picked up that McDavid plus one thirty anytime goal, which. Didn't take long to break, and we're definitely going back to him today. But we're starting Boston, Carolina, the battle of the home teams. Jacob Slavin over 0.5 points plus 130. I think this is probably 20 points too long here. Uh, I mean, here we are, game seven in rally. Jacob Slavin, Slavin is third on the team in points with six and has recorded a point in five of the six games. He leads the team in time on ice at 23 minutes per game. In a game seven here, Coco, with so little ice likely to play with, especially with these two teams, how likely is it that we're going to see that pucks on net mentality here from the blue line in Carolina? Well, it's it's the it, it's it's the sort of game plan that you sort of don't need to draw up, but figure that you already know going into a game seven. Obviously, the excitement around it the energy that it's going to be played with and the emotions that are going to come out of it. it. Everybody says in game seven, throw anything at the net because anything can go in, especially in overtime. Well, why can't you have that same mentality five on five throughout the ask, you know, ask Louis Deming, just throw anything on. Right. The exactly. Oh, God. You know I mean? yeah. It's playoff hockey. Uh, you're not at, at in these type of games. You're not always going to see the prettiest goals. You might even see the ugliest goals go in because that's just the amount of tension that gets you know played with during these games. And look, it's it's weird that we're choosing a defenseman to record a point here, but really, if you look at Slavin's production, um, there's no reason not to like this prop because you know he's going to be on the ice for almost half the game. I mean, you know, Rod Brindamore has done a good job in the in the matchups. Um, you know, playing him against the perfection line. I don't know if those guys will be together tonight, but if they do. Carolina plays like a different team at home. I don't know what's going on in this series, but this has been the only series out of all of them where literally every home team has won. So you got to like Carolina's chances to come out with a victory in today's game. And Slavin, he's not going to do much that's going to wow you or flash you, but what he's going to do is be precise. And, you know, he's, he's going to find a way to, you know, be the leader that he is. And if he does get a point, if he doesn't get a point, whatever it is, he's going to be logging big minutes. And like you said, there's no easier mindset as a defenseman that knowing when the puck comes low to high for you at the blue line, just get pucks to the net, get those dirty, greasy goals. And this is where you can probably benefit with a Slavin point. Yeah, I believe the last time we were on Slavin, we had him for he an scored. assist and he scored. <laughs> but I think I think that assist was like plus 150, making yeah. this plus 130 point a hell of a bargain here. So he led all Dean expected goals too in game six. And he leads the, the the Canes in a weird stat. While he's on the ice, he records the team records more shot attempts than on any other player who's on the ice. So he generates that PP two, 
Obviously, Tony D'Angelo taking the point on PP1 there. But he also plays with Tony D'Angelo, who's leading the team in points in the postseason Mm -hmm. on their five-on-five line. So even his defense partner has an offensive mind. So there's definitely a lot to like here from Slavin, who's uh, a pretty underrated blue liner and is pretty much a number two across the board. So Jacob Slavin, over 0.5 points, plus 130. Jumping over to the late game, Kings, Oilers. And kind of just have to go with McDavid. I mean, this is a tough price over zero, over 1.5 points, minus 125. That's a lot to bite, but this guy's just putting it all on his shoulders. He was playing with dry sidle the other day, but as you mentioned earlier off air, the dry sidle health is a slight concern. So McDavid yeah. might even have to be more me, more, more, more in deciding game seven. What do you think about laying two points here? Well, look, obviously Edmonton's a team that has a lot of expectation and is going to feel the pressure of, you know, winning this game because they need to win this game in order to advance and in order to meet up to their expectations. And I can tell you a player that's feeling a lot of that pressure and and going to carry the brunt of this pressure, and that's Connor McDavid because – as great as he is, and he's probably the best player that plays the game right now, everybody says, you know, great regular season player, can't play at that same level in the playoffs. And that's that's a huge chip on his shoulder that he's playing with to prove the doubters wrong and to actually, um, you know, to, to, to back up those, um, you know, those those expectations that come from him and, and, and the franchise. So you, it, it, you saw a glimpse of it last game where – you know, down 3-2, had to go into a must-win game in L.A., was feeling the same type of pressure, and he had an unbelievable game. You know, opened the scoring, got that all-important first goal. Second I mean, shift of the game or something. Right. Yeah, just, that first yeah. goal in the series has been proven to be monumental because the first goal has been the, the winner of the game. He got that, and he followed up with two other really great assists to seal the deal for the Oilers. And so if you're thinking of a must-win game at home, you know, you got to lean on the best player in the game to have a big game because that's how you figure the, if Edmonton wins, that's the way they're going to win. They ain't going to win if, if if McDavid gets shut out, especially with the health status of, of Dreisaitl. So, you know, he's got 12 points in six games, which means he's <laughs> averaging two points a game. Why not tonight either? Yeah, he's hit the over one and a half points in five of the six games. That's why, obviously – this 55% implied probability or whatever it is, is uh, is laying here. So liking McDavid, two points. I mean, he played 24 minutes in game six, and that was with the lead. Imagine if they're trailing. The guy won't get off the ice. Right. So, so I'm taking that. We're also sticking with this game for our third, looking at an Evander Kane goal, plus 140. I mean, uh, seven goals. We know, we obviously, everybody knows how many goals he scored. I think that's why uh, he put it up or that it was going to game seven. But either way, we're not sure if McDavid really enjoyed it on the bench or whether he was just beaking the ref. Some people were saying that too. But either Mm -hmm. way, I think uh, Captain Connor kind of got in his ear and said, you need to be a little more professional here. We got a lot more work to do. Yeah, and, and again, that's because of the pressure that Connor's feeling. He does not want to show up the opponent because they haven't won anything yet. Yeah, they won a big game. Yeah, Evander Kane played a big role in that. But he's basically saying, man, like, come on, focus on the task at hand. And that's leadership. Like, that's maturity. That's you know, you, that's that's Connor McDavid learning or, or at least trying to learn it, of the things, you know, from watching other guys and their approach to the game, of the things that it takes to win at this time of year. And the last thing that you want to do is showboat. And – Obviously, Evander Kane is one of those guys that loves to showboat uh, when he's on the ice. But, you know, credit to him. He's a guy that backs it up, too. Right. He's a guy that's, you know, uh, has found a nice niche in Edmonton as, you know, a winger playing with McDavid or Dreisaitl has scored a ton of goals. Seven in, in, in six games in this series is, is you know, not nothing to, uh, you know, nothing to hide away from. It's actually pretty remarkable. So you got to think in a big game, too considering, you know, maybe the embarrassment that he could have felt in that moment, that he knows he's got to back that up and have a big game. And look, I played with Evander Kane in Buffalo. If there's one thing that this guy loves doing, he loves scoring goals. But if there's one thing that he's really good at doing too, is really good and really good at scoring empty net goals. And if you think <laughs> that there's a chance that Edmonton might be leading in this game, 
and 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 LA pulling their goalie. I mean, this is how you can cash in on one of those uh, on this prop is that he's got a good knack of scoring empty net yeah. goals. <laughs> he know he know he knows when to leak. Right. Right. Yeah, so. the underrated skill of uh, getting the garbage empty net goal just to just to pump the stats. So, I'm I'm with you. I like Edmonton to roll. I like Carolina to roll. I like Toronto to win. We won't say roll, uh, but no, I, I like big guys. I like big guys doing big things here. Kane uh, will definitely fit that mold, especially. I mean, if Drysaddle is slowed down today. It wouldn't be surprising to see Kane jump up into that PP one on the wing there because right. he's on PP two now. So they need they need another trigger man on that PP one that's actually been really good so far in the series. So to recap, Slavin over zero point five points plus one thirty in the early game. Check out our Leafs props over uh, same channel. Then our third game here, Kings Edmonton. We're hitting McDavid over one and a half points minus one twenty five, and then hitting Evander Kane anytime goal plus. 140 game seven best of luck with your action that will do it for us on nhl puck prop don't forget to head over to covers.com check out all the nhl odds analysis there i'm jingles he's coco lead us out for this game seven saturday bud enjoy the best day of the year three game sevens ciao